EasyJet, Europe's big low-cost airline, wanted us to shed light on some of the fantastic and easily accessible riding locations on this continent. A short flight for a long weekend or a week away. Yeah, but we didn't just want to take you to somewhere you've already seen, like Mont Ventoux again, or to Stelvio again. No, we wanted to show you somewhere that you might never have thought about riding your bike before, like Gran Canaria. Look at that. Oh, and yes, we did get speedy boarding. <laughs> We flew from Gatwick Airport, just south of London in the UK, leaving cold and rainy England at 7am and then just over four hours later, after breakfast and a cup of tea, arriving in Gran Canaria. We picked up a car and headed over to our hotel to unpack, build bikes and scope out a decent coffee shop for the morning. After all, any bucket list ride should start in a coffee shop and our Gran Canaria ride is no different. We're in La Aldea de San Nicolas, a small town on the west side of the island. Which is where exactly, I hear you ask? Well, Gran Canaria is one of the Canary Islands, a Spanish archipelago in the Atlantic Ocean, just off the northwest coast of Africa. Its neighbours, Tenerife and Lanzarote, are more famous for cycling perhaps, but we don't think they're quite as good. Someone should really tell all those pro cyclists stuck at the top of a volcano altitude training on Tenerife just across the water. Our ride today is 73 kilometres long. It's not an epic, it's doable by a broad range of abilities, if you give yourself enough time. But do give yourself plenty of time, because Gran Canaria is incredibly mountainous, as you're about to find out. You might well be wondering why we're at a coffee shop and uh, Dan's topless. Uh, it turns out because he put his undervest on the inside out. So. Oops. I, think I, might. I did just get a wolf whistle, though. Yeah. My bloke. Yeah. Not quite sure he's all there. Anyway. We haven't given you that much of an opportunity for a warm up on this ride, so you might want to do some flat riding before you start it if you need to get your legs turning. But we'll give you some more details of this opening climb shortly. We wanted, though, to give you a bit of an overview of what this route is all about. That's right, so we've got a fairly big opening climb, and then we're on a rolling road where we hit the first of our very important cafe stops, and then we hit the bottom of another pretty monster climb. We do, yeah. We've planned this meticulously, I think you might say. We wanted this to be beautiful, almost epic, achievable, plenty of coffee stops, a nice place for lunch, and it finishes on a descent. So our last descent is called the Valley of Tears. Now that's a bucket list climb for a lot of people, but why would you want to climb the Valley of Tears? No, you'd probably end up crying, surely? Yeah. So let's give you some of the key stats for this opening climb of our ride. It is seven and a half kilometers long at an average gradient of eight and a half percent. But the last four kilometres, which we are on now, average a little under 10%, so it does begin to bite. It is called the GC200. Oh. Not exactly romantic in terms of its name, and actually, it really doesn't do the beauty of this climb any justice at all. Now, if we're talking times, the record is a little over 23 minutes, set by pro rider Matteo Monteguti. We're going to take a little bit longer than that, aren't we, mate? Yeah, we've allocated slightly longer. In fact, we've already taken a lot longer than that. 29 minutes. <laughs> I don't know about you, Dan, but straight out of the blocks, you just feel like this place is exotic, don't you? Like the vegetation is so different, the, just the whole air quality yeah. is so dry, it's fantastic. Not only that, but there is almost zero wind here today. Yeah. I will be talking a lot more about weather later on in this video, you'll be pleased to know. But it's such an incredibly still day today. Yeah. Now, the, the other thing about this climb, other than the gradient of length, is the quality of the road surface. Like, it sounds kind of stupid, but it's so important that not only have we got no leg warmers on, no shoes, we've got an extra 20 PSI on our tires, and we're just rolling effortlessly.
Now we might only have done 19 kilometers, but given that this is a bucket ride, where we basically just get to do whatever we want and enjoy it, seems like a perfect opportunity for cafe stop number one. Yes, let's do it. Perfectly located. No, well, I might get one of those juices as well as a coffee. I'm going to get two, yeah. It might feel a little bit early to stop for coffee, let's be honest, but we have got another large climb coming up and it's going to take some time to get to the top where we've planned lunch. Uh, so I think it's probably the perfect place to have them. Uh, we've got a small Cortado and a large Cortado. Later on, we are planning on getting a, a leche leche or sometimes known as a cafe bonbon, which apparently involves condensed milk inside the coffee. So for that sugar hit at the end, we've got that in reserve. I can't believe how how English and middle-aged we sound. Apparently, it's got condensed milk. Yeah, well, we're English and middle-aged. What do you want? You are, mate. I'm <laughs> Yes, okay. Uh, right, now, before we start, we did talk about the fact that it's a bucket list ride, therefore we can do what we want, and we are allowed to stop for coffee after 20 k's. But it does beg the question, doesn't it, about what actually is a bucket list ride? What does one have to do to qualify to be an ultimate ride. What's your feeling, Dan? Well, I think it's quite hard to completely define. I'm loving the fact that the weather's great, but I don't think that is necessarily a given for a bucket list ride. You might need to have an epic one with really bad weather conditions. But just to come to somewhere where you feel like you're achieving something on your bike, I think is first and foremost, isn't it? And this route already feels like it's going to be like that. And it's just so beautiful. I'm yeah. really, I, I did the research before I came out here, but it's way better than I even thought it was going to yeah. be. And it also, for me, this one qualifies in the same way. It's because it's taken us away from home and winter and wet and cold and overshoes and bib tights. And it, so even though, you know, perhaps at the end of summer, this would feel like less of a treat, right now at this time of year, in January, this feels like the ultimate treat. And yet it was kind of so easy to get here. Yeah. It's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, it's brilliant. I'm actually looking forward to finishing the drinks and carrying on. <laughs> yeah. that's, what, that's what constitutes a bucket list ride when you want to leave the cafe. That's the definition. Um, so obviously Dan, a lot again. firstly uh, put his undervest on inside out and got naked at a cafe. And then the second cafe we stopped at today, Dan appears to be getting naked again. And now it's because he decided he doesn't want an undervest on at all. Well, we've got another climb to go up. I was hot on the first one at nine in the morning. We've just turned off the coast road and onto climb number two. This is called the Serenity Climb, which I do like the sound of. It's eight and a half k's long, a little bit shallower in gradient than our first climb. This is six and a half percent. Yeah, it sounds a lot more appealing, both in terms of its name and also in terms of its gradient. And actually, from what I read about this climb, I've got some very high hopes about how epic it's going to be. It really seems like it's very narrow with some of the best views you can imagine seeing on a bike. Let's see if that's true. It's also hugely popular, 27,000 attempts on Strava. That's quite a lot of people. One of the advantages of Gran Canaria over some other popular cycling locations is the climate. In the summer months, the average high is 27 or 28 degrees Celsius, which is warm, but it's not excessive for riding your bike. But it doesn't deviate much, so in the middle of winter, i.e. now in January, it's at its lowest point. But the average high temperature is still 21 degrees Celsius, which is absolutely perfect for cycling. And actually today, it's 24 degrees right now here at 900 meters above sea level. And on top of that, versus some of its neighboring islands, it's much less windy. And in fact, the least windy month is right now in January. There is barely a breath of wind today. It's absolutely fantastic. Sorry, mate. Just had to make sure I was getting an Insta banger. Yeah. You're talking about wind again? So I've been getting a picture for the bike vault. Yeah, I was talking about the weather. It's absolutely incredible. Oh, I started in the big ring. You left it in the big ring? Show off. How cool is this? Literally just crested climb number two to find some blokes 
with a roadside store giving away oranges. This is just about going to keep Sai going until our planned lunch stop because he's recently been talking about chocolate energy gels and what he's going to have for lunch. Which just again, had new, just had a new scientist world chocolate energy gel, which was really very good. Again, he's talking about Mojo potatoes. He's absolutely obsessed with them. We'll explain more in a little bit about Mojo. When you crest the top of the second climb, there's a bit of a change of scene. There's a lot more vegetation up here. And we're on kind of a plateau, basically. It's still a little bit up and down, isn't it? But we're generally bowling along quite quickly, ticking off the Ks, really in quite a pleasant way, I guess. Yeah. Uh, we've been chatting a bit more as well about what makes a bucket list ride. And since we've been on the Serenity climb, we've decided that one thing that can make a bucket list ride is a road like this that feels like it has been designed solely to ride your bike on. Yeah, it's, it's narrow. It's like a kind of, almost like a bike path width in places. And then it's rarely straight. In fact, this bit here could be the longest straight we've ridden on in about 15K. Yeah. Just constant twists and turns, just fantastic. What I really loved about that climb though, Si, was the fact that it wasn't a steady gradient all the way up. You had bits where it was quite difficult, bits where you were climbing but reasonably fast. But for me, most importantly, areas where it was flat or downhill and you picked up a little bit of speed. Because I think it's fair to say I'm not quite as fit as I used to be, so I really appreciate those bits. But they do make you feel good, don't they? Like, because you, you hit these little sections and you carry your speed into them and then you kind of recover on the next bit. Yeah, I agree with you. To just ride up and enjoy, it's fantastic. No room on the bike rack. Busy old place. Second coffee stop, as promised, we've ordered leche leches. Dan, do you think we stir it or what? Oh, we will stir it in a second, yeah. Okay. Basically, everything that you need for the last part of a ride in a very small glass. So you've got lots of sugar in the form of condensed milk and then plenty of caffeine in the form of coffee just on top of it. Uh, now, it might be mainly descent back to the end of this ride, but unfortunately, there is still a little bit of climbing to go before we get to it. Yeah, according to uh, my wahoo, uh, it's an extra thousand metres. No. Well, that's what it says. You're joking. Yeah, so someone's got something wrong. Strava or... Uh, I think I'd better have two lechy lechies. <laughs> Come on, mate. <laughs> Lunch stop and uh, look who's stopped by. Yeah, Ben Swift here. We saw Ben at the bottom of the Serenity climb and in the time that we've done that climb, he's done two, I think. He's gone up the Valley of Tears as well. How was no it, less. Pretty much crying most of the way. Liz, what's his name? Valley of Tears. I don't suggest it unless you've got a compact. <laughs> he's taken an hour to get up here, but he's also just been telling us about how beautiful the roads are around the rest of the island and uh, been coming here the last few years. Well, Dan is currently in what looks like the pursuit of the perfect selfie. I thought I'd take a moment to talk about geology. Now, let's get the video. It'll be brief and interesting. So the Canaries are volcanic islands and they began life about 14 million years ago. They built up and up and up over subsequent volcanic eruptions until about 9 million years ago when there was a cataclysmic collapse of the central caldera on Gran Canaria. Now you can't see it very clearly anymore because there were another several million years of eruptions after that, but you can still make it out such as behind us right now. Now, fortunately, there haven't been any really big volcanic eruptions for about three million years. But what that means is that the island is characterized by these huge canyons that have been eroded into the central massive. Perfect for bike riding. Is that the end of the geology lesson, Si? For now, actually. I'm sure there's more to come. Fantastic weather here, isn't it? Unbelievable. Can you start telling us a bit more about wind, Dan? Well, there you go. Look, Tenerife in the background. Wave to all the pro cyclists stuck on top of a volcano with no roads to ride. It is high up, isn't it? You almost have to look up to it from the top of this hill here. Yeah, what was it? Three and a half thousand metres or something? Yeah. Well, talking of climbing, uh, this point here kind of marks the end of most of the climbing for today's ride with GCN. Uh, from here on, it's pretty much a very long descent 
back to our hotel. And again, I think for me, that's one of the things that constitutes a good bucket ride, descent to the finish. <laughs> yeah, hopefully the tailwind as well. You can actually see it, look, you can make it out on the side of that valley there, up to that tiny little village where I believe there is a possibility of a third coffee stop, but I don't know about you. After that lecher lecher, I can't imagine anything worse right now. But then it basically just drops off the end. Yeah. This incidentally is the Valley of Tears. Should be all right going down though. I hope so. There's a lot of aloe vera knocking around, so if we do fall off, at least we can be soothed afterwards. Hey Dan, why are you, why are you getting your undress down now? I'm a decisive kind of guy that's very sensitive to temperature changes. <laughs> 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 We've just stopped quickly because somebody shouted at us and uh, it echoed off the mountains here. So For about 10 seconds. We've been doing the same thing. It's quite incredible. Ready? Three, two, one. Echo! <laughs> Still going. Same way, okay. Hang on a minute. I'll have a try then. Echo! <laughs> Bloody hell. That is amazing. Right then, on with the bike ride. It's <laughs> a flipping understatement. Dan, awkward fist bump. Yeah. Boom. That was a great ride, wasn't that it? That was an absolute perler. I mean, genuinely, that's brilliant, isn't it? Well, not only do we have a beer, we have a beer that has been, well, I say we, I have bought a beer because Cy is uh, gluten intolerant. I've got a beer that was awarded Artisan Beer of the Year in 2015 and 2016 and the Superior Taste Award twice. Well, mate. Stick this in your pipe and smoke it. My gluten-free beer, high fives all around there, is the world's most award-winning one. So there we go. Cheers to you. Is it really? Yeah. Really? Well, I don't know. That's what it says in big letters at the top. The thing is, though, mate, yours is uh, only 5.4% and mine's 55 <laughs> Well, having had a couple of moments to gather ourselves after that ride, we've got a few things that we need to tell you, we think. So where we have stayed on Gran Canaria is perfect for this ride, isn't it? And it's going to be perfect for the length of our trip. We'll be here riding for three or four days. But most people who do come to Gran Canaria with bikes tend to stay on the other side of the island where you can clearly see on a map there are a lot more roads in which you can ride. So that would be one consideration if you do come over this direction. Uh, the other is that final descent. Now I, for one, have no regrets for doing it that way around because having spoken to Ben Swift, it sounded like it was really hard even for him, a top level pro. So I think we'd have struggled up there. Uh, but it is technical to say the very least. So go down there with caution. Yeah, and one final thing as well. We've got to say a big thanks to EasyJet who uh, gave us the opportunity to come out here and the excuse as well, because this has been a real treat. It, it has been, yeah. We wouldn't have come out here if it wasn't for them suggesting it. And I definitely think uh, we will be back filming here in the not too distant future because it's an amazing place. Yeah, absolutely. Right, do please give this video a big thumbs up if you would like to see more of this kind of thing. We certainly hope you would like to see more because it's it's good fun doing it, isn't it? Uh, and then if you want another suggestion, perhaps, for something for your cycling bucket list, why not check out the Taiwan KOM challenge that Matt and I did back in October? Or if you've got suggestions for a bucket list ride, leave them down below.